In Asia, you're seeing a pretty good start this morning. So, I mean, it's looking pretty solid across the board. Cosby leading the games this morning. We are working with friends in France on furthering this strategic and defence partnership. As per IIFL, this implies that the stock could actually see a weight increase as far as the MSCI May 2023 review is concerned. It's a good, solid opening for the market, about 70 points higher for the Nifty. It's a very uh, healthy sort of earnings growth, I would say given the kind of uh, macroeconomic context uh, which is currently prevailing. We're going to go from market risk to credit risk because now there is a beginning of a credit crunch in the banking system. Benchmark indices are up close to about half four percent. In the last 30 minutes, we've come off a tad bit from the high. Now in a circular, they've gone ahead and said that yes, now AIFs will have to give an option of direct plan to the investors. We've been given to understand is that Bandhan Group a, along with IFL Group is jointly looking at an opportunity to acquire one of the life insurance companies. Roughly about 83.5 cm rainfall will occur during June to September. We did see some fall from the highs but still it is managing to be in the green with decent gains right now. That was the day so far. Hello and welcome to Closing Bell, live from the CNBC TV 18 Motilal Oswal studio. I'm Reema Tenduka, with me is Surbhi Upadhyay and we've got Nigel D'Souza in the newsroom. Uh, Surbhi, hi Nigel, hi. Another positive session for our markets, the seventh one in a row. The Nifty right now as we speak is exactly at that 17,700 mark. It's come off from the highs of about 17,750 that it hit closer to 10.30 a.m., 11 p uh, a.m. After that, markets went down to levels of almost 17,650. So from there, it's managed to recover. So the top has been sold off, but the bottom uh, has been bought into and the markets are cruising along right now with a gain of close to about half a percent. Mid-caps today are trailing a bit compared to the frontliners. So the mid-cap index is up close to about half a percent. Banks are supporting the markets. The Nifty Banking Index is up nearly one and a quarter percent. Metal names like JSW Steel, higher in trade, FMCG, ITC particularly, autos are seeing buying. The only drag today is coming in from the IT index ahead of results from TCS and Infosys. The Nifty IT index has roughly a weightage of about 15% on the Nifty and that's under pressure. The Nifty IT index down close to about a percent and a half. What's aiding the up move is the IMD forecast. Contrary to SkyMed is saying that we are going to have a normal monsoon, though they are keeping a lookout for El Nino in the second half of the monsoon. But so far at least, the prediction is that it's going to be a normal monsoon. Europe too, which has opened up after a long week weekend has opened up with strength and gains of anywhere between half to one odd percent. But watch out guys, it's the financial nifty expiry today and banks is where all the action is but the last one hour could be tricky and important. Absolutely. For the time being, I was looking at the three of us together. Uh, we should get Nigel on the screen as well. Shall we say the markets uh, in the pink, pink of health? <laughs> yes, you, you guessed it right. Well, well uh, wasn't planned but it just kind of turned out that way. Shades of pink, not bad. It's, uh, it's always a nice color to have. Nigel, would you agree? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, to Rima's point, I think today it's a tale of two halves in the market, right? Because banks are really making up for the pressure that IT is exerting on the downside. Uh, and more than that, it's, it's actually IT which is the only down sector in the market. Otherwise, we have a fair amount of contribution coming in from some of the FMCG names as well. But in any case, the fact is the market is running into a congestion zone. This is pretty much from where the Nifty had turned southwards exactly a month ago, around the 9th of March or so. Uh, so the Nifty of course is trading above, has been tra trading above some of the key moving averages, 20 day, 50 day, uh, the 200 day. Uh, the congestion zone comes in around uh, 17,750, 760, going up to 17,800 and today's intraday high was exactly at that congestion zone mark. So the Nifty needs to take that out for the up move to perhaps continue. Uh, banks are of course the big support zone. So the, the question is can the banking momentum continue? beyond the expiry phenomena as well. Uh, the next level for the Bank Nifty that I would at least look at is the, uh, the 100 DMA. The Bank Nifty is anyway trading above the 200 DMA. 100 DMA comes in uh, at 41, 700 thereabouts, 720 uh, thereabouts. And we're a little distance away from that. But there's serious momentum in the banking side of the market, fueled by a lot of those very strong uh, quarter updates that we got. So uh, that's something that's playing out. The only sort of uh, caveat is that incrementally speaking, the small cap index and the mid cap index, 
they're not doing as well as the large cap indices. But look at the market breadth. That's probably a better barometer. So the indices are, you say, just up about 0.3% or so. But the advanced decline ratio has been very healthy for more, most parts of the day. Even now, there are over, I think, 1,800 stocks that are advancing uh, and about 1,000 or so on the declining side, though the lines have narrowed. But in any case, there's, there's a fair amount of traction on stock-specific basis as well. Nigel, what, what would you say? What trends are you reading into today? Well, I'm looking at the options data, actually. The 17,650 put, that's fairly active. That's one of the most active strikes in today's trading session. So we need to keep an eye out uh, on that one. And there is some writing that we've seen at that particular level. So just to give you a data point, uh, the total open interest uh, built up out there is close to around 20 lakh shares or thereabouts. So the premium is at around you know, 30 rupees now, but around on average it would be around 70 to 80 rupees also. Clearly signs of writing being seen at that particular strike. On the upside, the 17,700 call, yes, we're up close to around 100 points or thereabouts, but it appears you know, there is some signs of writing even at those levels. So just plugging in that number, 17,700 call, the premium is around 60 rupees. You add the 60 rupees to around 17,700, and the resistance level comes in that vicinity of around 17,750 to around 17,800. As I've been saying over the past few days, we're at the upper end of the band. We need to cross the 17,700 to around 17,800 odd zone. And if we break out from here, then in fact, maybe we'll start talking about fresh all-time highs. But for the time being, the bears are putting in a bit of a fight. And I think the next few days, the IT index will give further direction because no worries with the Nifty Bank. It was finding some bit of resistance in the last couple of days at around that 41,300, 41,250 odd mark. Today it's broken about that and for the last couple of hours we're trading about 41,300, which is a very, very bullish signal. So no worries on the Nifty Bank. Financial Nifty expiry will take place in the next 60 minutes. But for the time being, that's working in favor of the bulls. Let's see whether or not we can get closer to around 17,750 on a closing basis, guys. Okay, that's going to be the key level to uh, watch on the Nifty and on the Bank Nifty. Let's tell our viewers what we've lined up on Closing Bell today. A whole host of stocks are on our radar. Auto stocks race with Bajaj Auto trading at fresh 52-week highs. Maruti ticking higher post a fresh brokerage call. On the downside, IT, of course, sees pressure ahead of the earnings season. So some analysis coming up around that. Kotak Mahindra Bank gains on expectation of it getting a higher weight in the Morgan Stanley Composite Index. The review of the global index in May will factor in more room for foreign investment. We track technicals with Jay Bala of CashTheChaos.com and we'll talk fundamentals with Ravi Dharamshi of ValueQuest Investment Advisors. All that and much more over the next 60 minutes. Well, how should you position yourself in the final hour of trade? Um, we have Mitesh, who's uh, back with us. Uh, hi, Mitesh. Good afternoon. It's been a rather good trading session. We're holding at around that 17,720-odd mark. What's your view from year on on the index? And give us a couple of trading calls as well. Uh, good afternoon, Nigel. So, uh, one, I think, you know, uh, the index hasn't tapered off, uh, though, you know, we had suggested that some profit would be taken around the 17,750 mark, purely because of the fact that, one, we've had a very good rally from 16,900 levels, so that's given you about 800 plus points, and uh, 17,780, 17,800 is some kind of a supply pivot for me. Uh, that's where the market's uh, pullback rally in the month of, uh, or in the first week of March had, uh, you know, tapered up. So I still believe that this level will come into play and given the fact that we also overbought, we have taken uh, a good part of position on, of index off the table and waiting for a dip to buy into it. So around 17,600 would be the fresh entry point. Uh, but you can keep about, you know, half the positions open and see how, uh, if the, the market continues to march further, which I suspect, you know, is a slightly low probability of it, but uh, then you never know the final outcome beforehand. Having said that, we stock calls on the uh, long side I have uh, ONGC is something, you know, which is possibly uh, getting into an up move again. So buy here with the stop at about uh, 156 for targets of 167. And a big breakout is taking place uh, on the charts of Naveen showing It's already moved about a little bit more. But buy with a stop below 4400 for targets of 4650. Big move coming in on Naveen Florine, even on the EFNO side, uh, there has been a lot of build-up uh, taking place in today's trade. But Mitesh, thank you very much for that. Let's talk about autos. The Nifty Auto Index is up close to about 0.7%, 0.8% at the day's high. Bajaj Auto at a fresh 52-week high. Sonia is here with a roundup of the auto news. 
So thanks a lot for that. Uh, so Bajaj Auto is up uh, in the green. It's at a fresh 52-week high. But the important bit is it's had a very smooth run this year as well. So the stock is up about 15% in 2023. Now, as we know, Triumph has transferred their India operations, the marketing and sales of the India operations to Bajaj Auto. And that deal has gone through, which means that Bajaj and Triumph will be jointly launching their new bikes um, somewhere in the middle of this year. We understand that there is a UK launch lined up in June of this year after which July onwards the Triumph bikes will be in the Indian markets and now uh, this is something that the street is betting on so Morgan Stanley put out a note where they're saying that in the bull case Triumph can add about 400 rupees to Bajaj's value which is a 10% upside to the current market price they also expect Triumph bikes to reach 30% market share in the premium cruiser category by FY26 so there's a 30% market share opportunity that they're looking at in the premium cruiser category now we understand that the first product could be launched, uh, could be the Triumph Bajaj 400cc and that could be in a range of around 2.5 to 3 lakh rupees and that comes out perhaps in the middle of June. So um, the street is definitely latching on to that. On Maruti, uh, Motila Loswal put out a very interesting note where they have a buy with a target price of 10,400. Now remember this comes on the back of the Goldman Sachs downgrade that came in yesterday but Motila says that they are expecting the company to outperform in a moderating growth environment in FY24. They say that uh, Maruti has a very promising product pipeline and they expect Maruti's market share to recover to 44.4% by FY25. Not just that, they're saying that uh, Maruti has a very favorable mix of good SUVs, their product pipeline is looking strong and that will help them sustain margin recovery as well. So two positive notes, of course uh, at large the two-wheeler space is also buzzing because the IMD put out a statement saying that there's a normal monsoon expected this year. A lot of these companies have a large rural presence so that will also be beneficial for them. Back to you. All right, lots of different voices uh, there uh, and uh, some bullish ones as well. Thanks, Sonia, for the details. Well, let's take the conversation forward with Deepan Mehta. He's uh, joining in, director at Alexa Equities. Deepan, always uh, great to have you on the show. So autos are pretty interesting, right? So much news flow. Tata Motors is telling us that uh, they will uh, you know, generate lots of free cash in Q4. Then, uh, of course, uh, the updates around Maruti as well as Bajaj Auto. Uh, give us your thoughts. Let's start first with uh, Bajaj. Stocks at a 52-week high. Uh, would you look at buying uh, a fresh at all now? Yeah, good afternoon and thank you for having me on your show, Swirbi. No, I think uh, we are a bit cautious on Bajaj Auto and no doubt uh, the tie-up with Triumph uh, certainly is positive news. Uh, but then overall, I think two-wheeler space has got uh, less of a growth momentum than the four-wheeler space within the auto industry. And there are better opportunities in the likes of, say, Maruti or Ashok Leyland or m, &M. And I do feel that the premiumization trend is taking over very strongly in the four-wheeler passenger vehicle space. And that's positive on the operating profit margin front as well as overall revenues and profitability. So if you're to just buy two or three auto stocks, then I'd go with the passenger vehicles. Again, Tata Motors, I'm not that sure I would like to avoid because there's a great deal of volatility in their earnings. And you can have a good quarter of Tata Motors followed by a really... Uh, you know, bad one as well, because there are just too many moving parts in Tata Motors. But we see secular growth momentum in m, &M in Mahindra and Mahindra, and to an extent Ashok Leland as well. And I think that's where we'd like to be overweighted. Uh, Dipan, hi. The sore point today is IT, right? The Nifty IT index is down one and a quarter percent, and that's the only big sector which is reeling under pressure. Now, all eyes are going to be on TCS and Infosys. TCS reports numbers before Infosys, but Infi is the one which gives you a guidance, and that guidance is going to be an indicator for what the rest of the year is going to look like. And there is some worry that perhaps Infi guidance could be a bit conservative. So con consensus expectations is that the company will guide for a 6 to 8% growth. But analysts tell me any number lower than 6% at the downside, say the company guides for 5 to 7%, or they increase the band and they say we need a 300 basis point uh, range in our, marge, in our guidance band because of the uncertainty, it will be taken negatively by the street. Remember, Infi is not too far away from its 52-week high uh, you know, so um, it's, um, 
you know, say Infosys stock is going to be tracked very closely. Even on the margin front, the margin expectation is that the upper end of the margin guidance is going to be raised. Current margins are 21 to 22 percent. The expectation is that it will be raised to 21 to 23 percent because attrition is coming down. If attrition is indeed coming down, wage inflation is slowing down, then the company should go back to its earlier margin guidance. But if the company disappoints on that, doesn't raise the upper end of the margin guidance or gives a very weak uh, revenue guidance, the street will be disappointment. Uh, on TCS, there was a lot of expectation of a buyback. But, you know, a lot of analysts that I'm speaking to indicate that a buyback is unlikely to be coming from TCS this time. One, they had already announced a large dividend in Q3. It was a 75 rupee dividend, taking into account the special dividend. Two, the company may look to conserve cash in an uncertain environment. And three, TCS would have already intimated the exchanges if they were considering a buyback by now. So um, TCS, unlikely to, um, you know, to do a buyback this time is what analysts uh, tell me. Uh, but Dipan, according to you, what explains this weakness that we're seeing, this big sell-off ahead of numbers? I think you're right. It's uh, to do with the disappointing expectation of a disappointing set of numbers and maybe poor guidance as well. Uh, because I think the external environment for the software companies has only worsened from last quarter to this quarter. And there have been uh, banking-related issues in the U.S., and banks, of course, are the largest clients. And overall, I think uh, there are too many macro headwinds. And maybe a quarter, two quarters ago, you felt that they, the IT industry would be able to ride it out. But it seems that uh, you know, things are going to be very challenging for the sector as a whole. And 6 7% type of top line growth rate doesn't really interest investors because they want to look at minimum 15% type of top line growth, which is available elsewhere in other uh, large sectors maybe like banking, auto, even some consumption or stocks. So we are seeing investor money moving out from software into some of the other sectors. Banking has done well today, real estate, and even uh, automobiles have done well. So we are seeing a sector churn taking place over here. Uh, but I would say still feel that the time to sell perhaps is gone. So best, at best to maintain status quo in the IT industry. And uh, hopefully if you are in good quality stocks, like say a Tata Alexi or a KPIT, CoForge, Infosys, uh, to an extent, even LTI mine tree, which are growing at uh, rates which are higher than their peer group, then maybe you should be fine and you should still get reasonable returns. But by and large, uh, IT is going to be a bit of a disappointment and we must brace ourselves for it. All right. Uh, Deepan, I wanted to ask you about the Fed stock. You know, JSW Steel, that's uh, one of the gainers, top three gainers on the Nifty itself. Now, they came out with their operational update yesterday and the guidance that they gave at the start of the year they achieved little lower than that. For the India operations, it was bang in line. But a couple of their other verticals they missed, and that's why for a consolidated entity, the uh, total guidance was not achieved. Now, my question to you is, what do you do with the stock from year on? One way of looking at it is, it has lesser exposure to Europe, so you have to toss up between JSW and Tata. Maybe you'll go for JSW. And input costs like coking coal as well have cooled off a little bit. What's your take on the stock at around the 710 odd level? See, I think that you could expect a trading rally in these companies at any point of time, but we are not long-term investors in any steel or any commodity stock for that matter. And overall, in an environment where inflation is a challenge and central banks are trying to cool the economy, and China also is not showing any specific uh, clear-cut signs of uh, uh, you know, growth uh, or at least steady growth, I would be a little bit underweight as far as commodities are concerned. And any rallies in GSW or Tata Steel or JSPL for that matter are all rallies one can sell into. Even at these levels, these stocks are not available at very attractive price to book uh, valuations. Typically, you buy them, uh, buy ferrous companies when they are trading below their price to book valuations. I don't think maybe Tata Steel maybe, but I'm not sure about GSW trading at below price to book. So I would like to just wait and watch as far as uh, steel stocks are concerned. And maybe the steel consumers like, say, automobiles or even real estate or even infrastructure, capital goods, I think that's where all the action is going to be uh, in the near term when the earnings season starts. Okay. All right. Uh, Gata Dipan, request you to stay with us. Well, before we take that short break, you know, Bharat Dynamics had come out with an update, operational update, and it was quite disappointing. But that stock, in fact, has spiked up in the last minutes. It's recovered those losses we saw on the day of uh, that, uh, you know, operational update. And even PFC, there's hopes that it gets included in the next rejig that we see from MSCI. You know, so that stock as well has currently moved to the high point of the day.
slip into a short break on the other side. We'll talk more stock specific action. We'll also be joined by Mr. Ravi Dharamshi of Value Quest Investment Advisors to give us his view on the markets and the sectors that he's focusing on. We come out with a uh, statistic and we uh, result is about 96% of 87 centimeter will be there. Roughly about 83.5 centimeter rainfall will occur during June to September. We expect that monsoon will be 94% of long period average, that is 868 uh, decimal 6 mm. And, uh, El Nino will be evolving and it will be uh, much stronger in second half of monsoon. We come out with a uh, statistic and we uh, result is about 96% of 87 centimeter will be there, roughly about 83 point. We come out with a uh, statistic and we uh, result is about 96 percent of 87 centimeter will be there, roughly about 83.5 centimeter rainfall will occur during June to September. We expect that monsoon will be 94% of long period average, that is 868 uh, decimal 6 mm. And uh, El Nino will be evolving and they, it will be uh, much stronger in second half of monsoon. Welcome back. Well, let's focus on the stock that has been the nifty winner right from the morning and that hasn't changed even now, Kotak Mahindra Bank. It's uh, up uh, almost 5%. Very, very strong moves coming in on expectations that uh, Kotak will see its weightage go up in the MSCI indices. And that's because of a change in the calculation in the available uh, FPI headroom uh, for the stock, Kotak Mahindra Bank. So let's uh, straight away bring in uh, our colleague Vivek. He's been poring over a couple of notes that are doing the rounds on the street to you know, get the math right and to understand what the implication could be in terms of the money that may flow into Kotak Mahindra Bank. Vivek, what are the numbers saying? Well, absolutely. So, you know, the latest shareholding uh, pattern update is what is getting the street excited. So, foreign headroom availability of over 25% actually implies that there is now a likelihood that MSCI will take this into account and thereby increase the weightage that the Kotak Mahindra Bank has in the MSCI Global Standard Index, the main index, uh, and almost double it from the current factor that it has. Currently, Kotak Mahindra Bank has 0.5 times factor as far as the Global Standard Index is concerned. Uh, if this particular factor is increased to one, which is what analysts are anticipating post the shareholding pattern update, uh, you know, you will actually see inflows of close to uh, $750 million. Now, this is an estimation as for what IIFL has um, now, also, you know, what you have to take into account is the fact that uh, MSCI will have to have, you know, number one, except that the foreign FPI headroom has gone above the 25% limit. And number two, you know, whether Kotak Mahindra Bank has gone ahead and updated the shareholding pattern in time, it does appear as though both of these criteria are met at this point of time, which is why in the May index review, to expect to see the weightage of Kotak increase in the MSCI standard index. And one time inflow of close to $750 million is how MSCI is likely to go ahead and implement this particular weight increase. Okay, got that. Uh, thanks very much, Vivek, for uh, helping us understand the the potential implications of the money that could flow in. Deepan, now that obviously has the street really excited and I guess it's also working well because Kotak has been a big underperformer, right? So now that's the technical aspect. 
in terms of a catch up that might happen purely because of positioning because of maybe these msci flows uh, but there's also then the the business logic to it so all put together what is your view on kotak mahindra bank see i think uh, maybe higher allocation in msci could be a trigger but nonetheless i think kotak bank remains a quite an attractive uh, stock to invest in again disclosure your vna clients are invested the reason for that of course is the underperformance and that's more to do with the fact that uh, they have been very conservative when it comes to lending but uh, the company has focused very heavily on making sure its casa is on the higher side uh, and that's going to be a big competitive advantage in the uh, scenario which is likely to come up for the banking industry where resources will get more expensive and there will be a lot of challenges to raise deposits but strong brands like kotak bank uh, will be able to you know kind of uh, gain an edge over its competition also i think the re-rating story is possible in kotak bank it's trading at or below uh, its peer group multiples and it's usually trading at a premium over there uh, the only real concern is are they going to step on the pedal when it comes to lending and it, i think that seems to be uh, there are some visible signs that they will do so over the next 2 3 quarters or so so i'm very positive on kotak bank and i think uh, it's been a bit of under ownership also coming into play over here so maybe you could see kotak bank really outperform in this uh, financial year compared to its peer group and compared to nifty and sensex as well okay you know i'm worried about uh, the you know uncertainty related to uday kotak stepping down in december will that create any sort of turbulence in the run up streama i think it's a kotak mahindra bank is an institution and um, you know they will always find uh, they always would have some sort of a leadership uh, transition in phase uh, all of these things they have put thought about well in advance uh, there have been no issues with uh, ceos uh, transitioning out when it came to uh, the likes of icici access bank hdfc or indusind for that matter and i don't think that there should be much of a much of a concern when it comes to kotak bank as well and of course i think in some role or the other mr uday kotak will remain connected with kotak mahindra bank and just his mere direction and uh, you know his advice uh, is more than enough for the bank to prosper and thrive uh, even when he is not at, at the active helm of uh, of the uh, bank but that also remains to be seen what decision the rbi takes okay uh stay on uh, depan another stock that we want to talk about is abb india now kotak institutional equities has downgraded abb india uh, and they believe after the recent run up the valuations may be a bit too stretch vivek is here with more details vivek well absolutely right you know abb india one of the top laggards in today's trading session now what actually happened is kotak institutional equities has gone ahead and looked at the annual report of the company and uh, number one you know they take into account the sharp run up the stock has seen also having a look at the high valuations at which post the recent run up you know the stock is tra- trading at so this is number one prompted them to go ahead and downgrade the stock to a reduce from the buy stance that it had earlier also what they are saying is that at this point of time at the valuations at which it is trading they are finding it quite hard to justify the sustainability that the company saw in 2022 number one of the sharp improvement in the margins and also the working capital improvement that the company saw in fy 2022 also what they are saying is that the company enjoyed a 37% post tax roic that is a return on invested capital in 2022 and they believe for the company to replicate this going forward is going to be very tough and hence the downgrade and today we are seeing, uh, seeing clear selling pressure in abb okay deepan thank you very much for joining uh, in and we'll also thank vivek on that note for highlighting uh, abb we've got a guest waiting by to chat with us dhari ravi dharmshi the chief investment officer at value quest investment advisors is with us on the show now ravi seven good days on the trot but we are now entering a period of heavy news flow especially in terms of earnings growth uh, are you buying anything in the indian markets right now or are you waiting for the earnings season to play out we have been fully invested uh, through the last 15 18 months 15 18 months have been a period of correction consolidation uh, that we have been going through so uh, if you had told me you know that uh, next 15 18 months are not going to be good and there's going to be a war and there's going to be a crude spike in crude and interest rates are going to go through the roof i would have said our index would have been down 30 odd percent easily but given that fact and we barely managed to Uh, correct by about 15 17% and uh, half of it we have, which we have already recovered tells you that our market is still in an uptrend and it is unwilling to go down even uh, fundamentally if you see the macroeconomically the way we are poised we are very different from the developed world 
developed world is facing an inflation issue and interest rates issue rbi is actually taking a lead and it's a very surprising and bold move uh, that we have actually paused paused before fed so uh, it is clearly the inflation differential that is reflecting in the rbi's uh, confidence the uh, dollar uh, rupee dollar remains uh, stable forex reserves remain stable Con current account deficit is uh, uh, under control and uh, fiscal deficit is also on a pa uh, glide path towards a lower number so i think india's balance sheet and india's macros are actually in a much better shape than the developed world and that is what is reflecting in the markets as well overall so mm -hmm. i believe i think uh, markets have uh, done correcting uh, of course it's not going to be that we are going to start making new highs immediately but uh, more constructive view on the markets uh, is warranted now mm. after the pause by rbi all right hi ravi good afternoon yeah absolutely you know to put it in cricketing terms it's like that batsman who's standing out there and you know the bowlers going on bowling those bouncers it's hitting him in the helmet but still the indian markets you know we battle the storm so maybe we're in for a bigger innings from year on but ravi you know the big talking point for the next few days is going to be the it space because tech numbers are going to be coming in there and the street is clearly a little bit cautious looking at the index itself but i think in the past you all have been a little bit positive on a couple of themes the er and d space if i'm not mistaken kpit what's your view on the it space and do you like anything at these levels or would you rather stay away so nigel let me correct you we have actually been a little uh, negative on the it space right uh, in fact uh, our allocation to it is uh, in uh, low single digits if at all and even within it we are not so constructive on it services so to say the okay. stocks have corrected uh, adjusting for the fact uh, that you know there is a headwind in the in the biggest market which is us and europe so uh, uh, now probably the margins have bottomed but i still feel that the growth is going to be a little bit of challenge for the next from next couple of quarters point of view we are more focused and maybe more positive on the it platform companies okay so you like uh, some of the it platform companies ravi hi good afternoon surabhi here you have been a big proponent of banks right for for some time you're a big believer in you know a multi year compounding story so i want to ask you how exactly are you playing it private versus psu large versus small nbfcs versus uh, you know uh, top of the line banks what are you most convinced on because if we look at the business updates at least q4 updates i think barring one or two like a karur vaisya or a, a you know a karnataka i think where there was a business uh, you know compression uh, lack of growth everybody else has shown a lot of growth so then uh, what makes it to your portfolios so uh, let me just uh, expand the banks uh, definition i would say we are positive on financials per se lending as well as non lending space but more bullish on lending space at this point of time within lending space uh, we are bullish on uh, private banks we are bullish on uh, nbfcs as well and we are bullish on some of the housing finance companies so asset finances housing finances and uh, uh, overall msme business uh, lending is what we are bullish on so the thesis is quite simple uh, the valuations are probably at a uh, you know 5 7 year low even for a, a leading bank like hdfc bank this is uh, one of the lowest in terms of price to book or p multiple it has been over a long period of time and uh, of course there were uh, genuine reasons for it there was a management transition there was a merger overhang and there was some uh, the uh, cost remain elevated for a long period of time and the deposit growth was not coming but now if you see since last two quarters that delivery has started happening the growth is coming back the deposit growth is coming back and uh, those uh, uh, overhangs are behind them so uh, i mean i'm just taking an example of hdfc bank as a representative of the overall lending space nobody is talking about npas anymore okay if you listen to any of the banking phone call uh, nobody talks about npas it's all about growth whether the growth will be better than uh, uh, industry or it will be low, less which area the growth will be and of course which products are the ones that are showing the maximum growth so from that point of view the balance sheet is there it is well capitalized economy is on a cyclical upturn and uh, financials are the best way to play it so uh, uh, we have our biases so, in terms of yeah sorry go ahead 
No, Ravi, I, I take your point, and precisely because of those reasons, I remember, I mean, for us as well as, you know, uh, stock market journalists, we would always look at the GNP and number, the first thing whenever a bank would report earnings, right? But that that's a thing of the past now. Uh, it's a great, great uh, sort of situation to be in. How much can multiples expand is my question. Uh, I think a lot of banks are still trading between one and a half, two times uh, price to book. As we go through the cycle, are you prepared for three, three and a half? Some of the NBFC or some of the lenders like Bajaj Finance have gone to like six, seven times. What kind of valuation multiple expansion should we be prepared for? So, you know, I've made this mistake in the past of anticipating how much the multiples can expand. And uh, one should not try and do that. Instead, what should uh, one focus on is the where are we in the ROE improvement cycle? Uh, that is what one should be focusing on. If the bank that you're referring to if the ROEs uh, are still closer to, uh, let's say, one, uh, sorry, I'm saying ROAs are closer to one, one and a half percent uh, or one percent, and it is on the improvement trajectory to one and a half percent, and the leverage is also still low in terms of three, four X, then you know that there is a ROE improvement trajectory ahead of you. And as long as that ROE improvement trajectory is there, you should not be too worried. There was a little bit of concern that because of the interest rates going up, especially for the MBFCs, the NIMS could contract. But uh, now that we can say that, okay, the RBI has paused. Okay, they might have not pivoted, but at least they have paused for the moment. And if Fed also pauses, then there is a that overhang is also gone in terms of NIM compression. So even NBFCs will do well. Companies that have the clean balance sheet are well capitalized and can grow upwards of 20% are the banks that you would ideally like to focus on, where there is also a uh, visibility of uh, ROEs going from say 12, 13% to 16, 17, 18%. Those are the banks and uh, NBFCs that we would like to be associated with. Okay, all right. Uh, interesting conversation as always, Ravi. Thank you very much for joining us today. And we look forward to the next time we will uh, connect with you. Well, on that note, we also have to take a very quick break. We're just after three o'clock and the market's holding up quite well. Uh, nice uh, century on the Nifty and banks are really leading from the front. Quick break. We will come back as always. We'll have uh, Nimesh joining in. We'll talk about what's buzzing in dealing rooms today and, of course, then some trading calls coming up with Mitesh as well. We come out with the uh, statistic and the uh, result is about 96% of 87 centimeter will be there, roughly about 83.5 centimeter rainfall will occur during June to September. We expect that monsoon will be 94% of long period average, that is 868.6 mm. And uh, El Nino will be evolving and it will be uh, much stronger in second half of monsoon. Welcome back. You're tuned in to Closing Bell and we are coming to you live from the CNBC TV 18 Motilal Oswal newsroom. Well, it's that time of the day when Nimesh joins us to give us a sense about how things are shaping up in the markets. Well, Nimesh, a very, very good day. Oh, it yeah. appears the Nifty Bank is breaking out today. True. What's your reading of it? So, you know, uh, right uh, that the Nifty Bank is breaking out and, that, and that's because there's buying as well. So, yeah. the, I mean, that's part of my list as well. That first signs of some bit of buying interest is back in the financial names and that in the large cap names. So, that's that's helping the markets. But I guess, you know, the from a, from a technical point of view as well, we breached another important crew, uh, resistance level of 17650 on the upside. So yes. that's positive, and it's backed by some institutional buying as well. In fact, uh, there is going to be a market at close, ma uh, basket buying at a leading effect. So maybe in the last half an hour, we'll see further volumes picking up on the upside. So that's that's overall feedback. As I said, you know, but the good part is today's rally is led by financial. So so a lot of the financial stocks are doing good. Of course, Kodak Bank has rallied on the back of that MSCI. But even outside of Kodak Bank, uh, my sense is that there is strong accumulation happening within PSU banks as well as in the private bank stocks. That's overall feedback. I guess uh, on the other side, uh, technology is not supporting the market. But again, tomorrow and day after will be very crucial as we, as TCS and Infosys both will report. So that will be very very important from a from an IT you know index point of view. But I guess beyond numbers, uh, I, I Street will watch out for the FY24 guidance from all the IT names. So that's something to track, except for the Q4 running. So that's that's something. But broadly, a good day, uh, momentum backed by FI buying. And the good part is leadership is back within the financial names. All right, uh, Namesh, let's get to individual uh, stocks then. You know, we had a couple of large trades today. And I believe on Sagar Cement, one of yeah. the 
shrewdest investors have got in, you know, who manages the fund out there. But that's a clear out trade, I believe. Tell yeah. us more about the other so, stocks. As well. you rightly pointed out, you, you track Sagar Cement very closely. So there is a large block, nearly four, you know four and a half percent equity changing hands. And I believe in terms of seller, one of the domestic mutual fund has has uh, sold out its entire stake. Uh, and 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 after that, you've seen a big move in that stock. So the disclosures will be important. But yeah, in terms of seller. Looks like a domestic mutual fund was a seller in today's block. So that's the first one. The second stock is Indus Tower. That stock in a, in a good market is down to percent largely on back of sell flow. So the delivery volumes are going to be quite high. And remember, you know, IFL uh, analyst did, spoke to us in the morning and said that he expects uh, Indus Tower to be out of the uh, MSCI in the May review. So that's also putting pressure on Indus Tower today. The third stock is Mandapuram Finance. Again, within the NBFC, this is one stock which is doing good, up 3 percent on good volumes. And there is buying interest as well. In fact, there was a Morgan Stanley note as well, uh, putting out a tactical buy, largely on the back of big move in the gold prices. They believe quarter four is going to be quite strong for Manipuram and hence a big move in that stock as well today. And the last stock is Venus Pipes. Again, a small stock, but again, uh, back in action today, good volumes. Uh, there were multiple blocks as well, nearly nearly 3% equity exchange hands. And there, I believe, a leading uh, H&I investor was a buyer into this block. So disclosure, again, there will be important. But there was a there was an interesting block where an H&I has bought a 3% equity in the company. We'll watch for the buyers and sellers on that one. Nimesh, thank you very much for highlighting all those stocks and the mood check uh, from the dealing rooms. Mitesh is back with us for a few BTST trading calls. Mitesh? So I have uh, two buy calls right now. Uh, JSW Steel is something which has given a good breakout above its uh, daily moving averages and uh, the indicator setup is very good. Uh, so uh, BTST here with the stock at about uh, levels of uh, 706 targets of 730 can be looked at. And the other one is uh, Tata Chemical. That's also near the day's high. That's a BTST with the stop at 1008 for targets of 1030. All right. Got that, Mitesh. Thank you very much for uh, the uh, quick update there and some calls. Let's uh, move on and take this conversation forward with Jay Bala of CashTheChaos.com. Now, Jay, of course, uh, as a lot of you would know, has been retaining a pretty bearish stance on the market. At least, I, I don't know, Jay, if that changed. I wasn't around last week. Uh, but you tell me, so about a 700-point expansion on the Nifty. Are you still retaining your original thesis that we are heading lower and this is just maybe a you know bear market bounce? So I'm in the show, still be, you know, I'm just a messenger. I'm just interpreting the market. So, you know, um, I just follow markets. I'm a slave to the price action. So if the price action were to say something different, I'll definitely change my view. Uh, see, the market is uh, doing within the bounds of a counter trend bounce. Uh, and uh, whatever is happening is still uh, resembling uh, all characters of a counter trend bounce. But the counter trend bounce is still up and we should continue this to be up. Um, as long as the market stays above 17,502. Um, uh, but it's starting to look a bit stretched and we are at the upper bounds of this counter trend bounce. So we could be starting um, a reversal um, anytime, probably uh, as early as tomorrow. But we need to see the break of support at 17,502. Until that point, assume that counter trend bounce is still in play. All right, Jay, I missed that. And it can extend on the upside to what level? Yeah, the resistance for the Nifty is at about 17,800. Um, maybe, you know, there is a, a probability it could stretch to 18,000. But, uh, you know, we are, at, are nearing the upper upper range of the uh, maximum uh, uh, point of counter trend bounce and we are likely to reverse pretty soon. All right. What about the Nifty Bank? Uh, you know, that appears to be breaking out. I think 41,700 is a level that some technical analysts are looking at. What are the levels you are looking at? Because it's crossed that 40,000, the 41,000 hump. Last few days, it was stalling at around 41,250. Today, it seems to have got past that. Is it good for more? The Taki index, you know, uh, the, for me, the resistance comes at about 41,500 and 41,990. Um, you know, um, it, the, the, within the pack, it's actually a mixed, mixed bag. Kotak is uh, bouncing uh, as it's just weighted off a very significant breakdown. But, you know, <laughs> it's not reversing the trend. Uh, and it's a, it's a leader within the banking pack today. Um, you know, it's, uh, SBI uh, has come to a very critical uh, resistance. The probability that it could turn down here is going to be watched. Uh, so if, it, that, we, we, if we have a negative day from here, there's a good probability that SBI could pressure on the could put pressure on the banking index. Um, so, you know, I, I don't see this rally lasting beyond 41,990. 
4990 is the cap on the Nifty Bank. Uh, Jay, afternoon, what about ITC? Now, ITC continues to rally. It's a fresh 52-week high on it today as well, approaching that 400 mark, 20% this year, 48% in the last one year, and all the dips seem to you know, get bought into. Uh, are you convinced about an up move from here on, or would you use this uh, up move to sell into the stock? Yeah, if you go back to most of my interactions, Rima, I've, I've been saying that ITC hasn't topped, and I even pointed out that uh, there was, despite the budget day uh, volatility, you know, slightly skewing my charts, I said there is pro probability that it's got one more higher high to come through. Uh, it's doing just that. Um, you know, as long as ITC stays above um, 369, I think the index will stay above 43,500. So that will keep the index up. But there is just a, a small bit of caution out there. ITC could uh, be running into an exhaustion top, but you know, uh, don't fight the trend. As long as the stock stays above uh, 369, uh, you know, you just want to be, uh, you know, just trailing the move for ITC. Uh, it's probably got a little more highs to come through, just around 405, 410 mark. But you know, um, we just want to act on the markets reversing until it reverses. We just want to stay with the trend. Okay, that's ITC. Uh, Jay, let me ask you about IT. I mean, the market and the price is really showing the kind of nervousness that exists uh, on the street with respect to earnings. Uh, what else are the charts telling you? Uh, it's anyway been one of the most unloved sectors in recent times. Is there any sort of a trade here on the way up or the way down? See, uh, through, all, all through last year, uh, the second, second half of last year, we moved to size. You know, I had been saying that, you know, the, it's more likely that the Nifty IT index is seeing a counter trend bounce. I would I was bullish on uh, second tier uh, IT names like uh, you know uh, uh, persistent and uh, uh, you know uh, uh, coforge and, uh, and other stocks, but uh, IT index is probably coming uh, very close to breaking the uh, 2022 low. Um, you know it shouldn't have traded below uh, 28. Uh, and, uh, uh, sorry, 27,900. And it did briefly, but it's just bounced recently. The, the reason for this is infi is, uh, is showing very high probability that it's, it might break 1355 the 2022 low and wipro uh, that's also likely to break uh, 350 so you know the frontline names are weaker compared to the uh, second year names and um, you know uh, infosys has a very large weighting on the it index so you know, that could be uh, setting the sentiment for the whole sector so uh, you know um, once the IT index starts to cave below the 2022 low, I'm sure it's going to start put, putting pressure on the second year names too. But uh, the only stock I think that may not uh, break the 2022 low amongst the frontline name could be HCL Tech, but that could also correct somewhere close to 980. All right, uh, Jay, I wanted to your view on two other stocks, Bajaj Finance and BPCL. Uh, you have view on both those two. Run us through your view and the levels you're tracking. Uh, see, Bajaj Finance has been one of the uh, leaders on the downside and it's recently had a bump up from the March lows and this bump up uh, is looking like a corrective rise. Uh, I think, uh, you know, it, it's due for an, another uh, leg down and complete the short term structure. Uh, it, it needs to go below uh, 5350. I think the price of it is about 5300 and as long as it stays above 59, stays below 5970. Uh, this negative stance is intact, and uh, BPCL surprisingly, with uh, all the you know uh, 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 news action that's happening uh, uh, for Brent and and other varieties of crude, it's time to uh, stay positive. There's a short-term uh, positive setup there. As long as BPCL holds above uh, 326, it has potential to scale somewhere close to 360 to 370. Mm. Uh, you know, do stay on. We need to slip into a very short break. By the way, Bank of Baroda has slipped to the low point of the day. It started off much stronger, but now is only up close to about 2.7%. So from the day's high, it slipped close to about 2%. The high today on Bank of Baroda, you can't see it much on this chart, but the high was closer to 173 rupees. Uh, slip into a break. We'll come back and we'll also be getting in the closing rates.
29 on the Nifty, a triple digit gain, 105 points higher. The Sensex up close to about 325 points. The bounce from that intraday low was actually pretty good in, you know, the Nifty has actually recovered nearly about 70 to 80 points from the day's low. We still uh, have uh, Jay Bala of Cash the Chaos with us. Uh, Jay, we've been talking about the Indian setup. Could you briefly run us through what's happening on the global front? Uh, the U.S. indices, what are the key markers to watch over there on the dollar, on crude and U.S. bonds? Um, the uh, U.S. equities markets, uh, you know, uh, have the main driver so far has been the tech stocks, and tech stocks ha have had a good rally uh, since their October lows. Um, but the rest of the markets uh, within the U.S. markets is just highly concentrated. There are about six, seven stocks which have been contributing. The Russell 2000, which is the broader representation of the market, has fallen about 13.5% as of yesterday uh, from the uh, fe uh, February highs. And if you take the low, it's 15%. Um, but, uh, you know, um, the NASDAQ is still, uh, you know, on the uh, uh, upside and still hasn't broken down. If you, you know, keep the markers for NASDAQ futures, 12.64 is a very critical level. If that goes, you know, uh, this market is likely to have done its uh, counter trend bounce from the October lows. Um, when it comes to FX markets, uh, the USD JPY is the most important cross for me. Uh, if It's likely to hold 129.6 and then take out 138. If this happens, uh, it's going to be quite bullish for the dollar, and we're going to see a period of uh, strength for the dollars uh, somewhere close to 109 to 111. That's the range I'm looking at for the dollar, uh, the dollar index basket, the uh, not exactly the <laughs> dollar against the, any particular currency. But um, likewise, when it comes to Brent, uh, you know, Brent has still got a little bit unfinished move to the extreme short term, and it's probably need to go somewhere close to 89, 90 mark before it resumes its uh, downtrend towards 65 and maybe later on uh, uh, towards 40, uh, towards the year end. So that's the setup for the uh, global macros here. Okay. All right, uh, Jay, we will leave it on that note for today. Thank you very much for joining in and we look forward to connecting you again, connecting with you again <laughs> next week. Thank you for being with us. Well, with that, we are down to the last four to five minutes of trade, and it looks like the Nifty is uh, sitting quite comfortable, uh, looking to go home with gains of about 100 odd points. And it's really been banks all the way, 560 points on the banking index, now approaching the 41,400 mark. Remember, the zone of 41,730 uh, is a critical mark for the bank Nifty. That's where the 100 DMA comes in. That's the next really level to watch for that particular index. Today, of course, has been a phenomenal move on banks. Well, let's uh, get you some market opinion before we uh, close down for the day. We did catch up with Gautam Duggar, Head of Research Institutional Equities at Motilal Oswal Financial Services, to get his sense on how he is uh, looking at the fourth quarter earnings season and the overall earnings trajectory for FY24. He says that uh, FY23 saw a nifty EPS growth of about uh, 13 to 14 percent and FI24 should see uh, an increase over and above that. He also shares some of his top sectoral bets. Auto is coming back after a five years of a slowdown where the profits of auto companies in Nifty from FI18 to 23 have declined by 20 percent. So it is making a comeback, right? Second on financials, which has already been on a tear for last five years, so profits have been up five times between FI18 to FI23. We are now expecting about 17 to 18% growth out there. Hindustan Aeronautics or Bharat Electronics. So unless someone is already holding it, whether defense play or some of the uh, celebrated capital goods names, it it uh, from a risk reward point of view, one has to be extremely, extremely cautious there if one is trying to, you know, contemplate a fresh entry. I think as far as this quarter is concerned, everybody is aware there's going to be some softness sequentially compared to the third quarter numbers and given the developments that we have seen in the u.s banking industry historically we've always liked the sector given the strength of the cash flows uh, and of course the high payout ratios so we are positively biased towards large cap it stock and we think uh, that uh, the recent correction which has happened has changed the price value equation uh, very favorably towards uh, uh, towards this name so uh, and and of course we don't expect any big uh, downgrade in the growth guidance, I think. Motilal Oswal bullish on IT prefers the large caps, but today IT is sold off pretty aggressively. The Nifty IT index down over a percent, 
with names like TCS uh, leading uh, on the way down with a cut of 2% ahead of numbers tomorrow. Infosys, HCL Tech also seeing losses in excess of 1.5%. Apart from IT and across the board, there was a sell-off in IT. A couple of FMCG names, so Asian Pains, Wipro under pressure. Asian Pains, in fact, under pressure for the second consecutive day. Even yesterday, Asian Pains was down nearly a percent and it's followed it up with further weakness. Tata Motors uh, today has come in for some profit booking. But the star today has got to be Kotak Mahindra Bank as the street now penciling pencils in higher FPI flows post the M, post MSCI potentially increasing its weightage in the standard indices when it does its review in May. So the street anticipates more inflows and that fueled a big rally. Apart from that, other uh, financial names like ICICI Bank looks smart. ICICI Bank gaining uh, one and a half percent. Uh, auto, uh, autos continue to move higher, so Aisha Motors, Bajaj Auto in the green. Metals had a strong second half, so JSW Steel up 4%. Tata Steel spiked up in the second half of the trading session to see a rally of 2.5% on that as well. All in all, another good session, right? Markets are slowly creeping higher and higher. And now 17,700 seems to be conquered. Absolutely. And on the mid-cap screens, Rima, though the gain is half a percent and that kind of pales in comparison to, let's say, the bank nifty today, uh, on individual stock names, you've seen a fair amount of action uh, and mo uh, movement. Uh, for instance, uh, talk about a Neogen Chemicals, where, of course, there's a news flow coming in with them looking at a technology transfer, 14% up over there. Uh, then you have, you've got a stock like Trident up about 7, 7.5%. Bombay Dying has seen uh, about a 6% move today. PLS International, Shipping Corporation of India, of course, on news. Government is looking to sell some of the assets and then overall look at, uh, you know, more divestment in the company. 5% uh, up over there. KPIT Tech has bounced back 4.5% higher. Sonata Software. Interestingly, some of the mid-cap IT names doing a lot better than the large-cap peers. So, uh, not bad in the mid-cap market. Uh, on the losing side, not too many names. Maybe a Rosari Bio, because it had been a big mover in the past. Today, it was down about 8.5%. Uh, maybe a Berger Paints shaving off a little bit of, uh, of uh, the gain as well, down about 3%. But overall, strong close coming through the market at very critical levels, but also uh, right in that congestion zone. Important for the Nifty to show if it can really take out the 17,750 to 800 level. But I guess uh, for that, Rima, we have two more trading sessions. But today, I guess the Bulls will have uh, yet another win. Uh, seventh consecutive day of gains, right? Seventh consecutive day of gains. But with that, we're going to wrap up on Closing Bell. Don't go anywhere. Our Tuesday special, Commodity Champions, comes up next.